All right, so the, for the solo section, um, there's not a lot going on in this tune. Uh, uh, I mean, it's cool. And there's a lot of coolness going on. <laughs> but there's uh, there's not a lot of crazy things going on, but it's the, the little subtleties that he does. Um, he, he uh, again, he's targeting chord tones, and he really... He really he slides into a lot of the notes and and he gets that little slick thing going on. Uh, so the very beginning, the first again, the, if you want to analyze some of the notes real quick, the the first thing he does that's over a D major chord. He's sliding uh, into the fifth. He's targeting that fifth of the D major chord, and then the D major seven chord. He's still working off of that fifth. Uh, but that's where he, he slides into... Uh, he, he does this little arpeggio thing where first, instead of just playing... Uh, instead of playing it straight forward like that, so... Before these two notes, he slides in the first note right there. He slides from the seventh fret or the eighth fret of the A string to the ninth fret of of the A string. Then he goes up uh, the seventh fret on the D string and the G string. And then again, instead of just playing these notes, uh, he slides into that first note. So it's again from the eighth net. The, I'm sorry, the 8th fret on the D string sliding up to the ninth fret of the D strings. And then he just plays a... He pulls off the 10th fret, 9th fret, and 8th fret. Or 10th fret, 9th fret, 7th fret. And again, that's that target note of the D. So over the D major chord... Then a D major 7 chord... To a D dominant chord... Um, but it's those little tiny slides that really add. Uh, and then he starts doing some things with little subtle bends and stuff, and he, and he really cuts notes off. Uh, it, it's that that little articulation thing he does that uh, he's so masterful at kind of everything he's doing. Um, but then he slides up. Cool kind of, kind of stuck in your face lick. Uh, um, let me use a pick. That's it. So what he's doing there is again, he, he, he's basing this off of a D major scale. So he's uh, he's, he's sliding up to that the on the G string, the eleventh fret. Um, which is the, the third, and then he goes up to the uh, ninth, uh, tenth fret B string, twelfth fret B string, tenth fret E string, twelfth fret E string. Actually, he doesn't go up to that twelfth fret, sorry, on the E string, so it's... down that. He walks down the 12th fret B string to the 10th fret uh, B string to the 12th fret G string and then he hammers on from the 10th fret to the 11th fret on the on the G string which is minor third to a major third. So, and he goes then he rolls the 12th fret on the uh, D string and the A string. So, and then the last note he kind of plucks on is the uh, the ninth fret uh, D string. So the whole lick is, and again he he really he really hits that top note. It's uh, it's so. 
Uh, and then the next part of lick is really kind of a cool thing, and I've been incorporating this little lick into my it's something. I don't know why I've never really played, but. Uh... Again, it's something that I usually don't. Like, I'll, if I play a lick like that, uh, I'll usually do. Or something like that. But I never slide down to that note after I do. And it was just, I, I thought it was just a cool little thing. Uh, again. And again, it's the, it's the dynamics at what he, uh, how he does that. Like this, it comes in and he really hits that note. kind of gets a little quieter at the end of that. Um, and then he goes into... Uh, then he does this cool little bend thing. Uh, and, and I love that. Again, he did that in... Uh, what was it? Prowlin', I think. He, he was doing... He does these things where he bends... And then he comes down and he slides out of it. So, and then he bends again. So it's picking. He's picking that note, bending it, bending it back down, not picking, and then sliding and bending up again. So, and then he bends down, pulls off, and then he even bends that last note up. So he's bending that uh, the twelfth fret B string up a half step. Bends it down, slides it down to the uh, eighth fret, and bends that up. Bends it down, pulls off to the sixth fret, and bends that up. So, so the whole thing is. <laughs> I do that a lot. Um, but uh, but th those cool little slick bends, you know, the rest of it is, is kind of straightforward. Um, but again, understanding a good thing to do is, is take those chords and, and break down one chord, one lick, one chord, one lick, and really see what he's doing and what notes he's landing on. Because each note he's landing on, generally chord tones, or, or, or just obviously in a slow tune like that, you got to land on a solid pitch. Um, anyway, but and it's fun. if you play it without music, you can hear those chords going by because of the strong tones that he's landing on. Anyway, so uh, I hope you enjoyed that that little lesson on that. Um, and what I would do is I just record those those actual or, or I'd record those chords and uh, just walk down scales, walk down chromatically, and see what's working and what doesn't. And that's a real uh, Scott Henderson kind of thing to do. Um, he'll go between like two different chords, like a uh, half step apart or something like that. And then you'll, you'll just play like a two note thing and then you'll go down and you'll try and you'll find the pitches that work and, and generally they're a half step away or, um, anyway, so we'll, we'll get into some of that when we go over some Scott Henderson stuff. Can't wait for that. So I hope you enjoyed and I look forward to the next lesson. Uh, again, check out, uh, guitarbreakdown.com. And uh, there's a lot of cool things coming up, and I'm sure you're sick of hearing that, but hopefully you'll enjoy what's to come. So thanks again for watching. Bye.